Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to welcome to to the Pittsburgh 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 Current Podcast live 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 live. I think we're live. I am associate publisher Bethany Rue. I'm editor and publisher of the Pittsburgh Current Charlie Beach, and we have a good show today. We- the number of terrorists apprehended at the southern border was 12 people, right. and by the way, up in the northern border in Canada. Uh, it's 41. Right. So maybe we need the wall up in Canada more than we need it down in, on, on in the Mexican border. You can't allow some monopoly or duopoly mm-hmm. just run roughshod on people. And so you have to take firm stances. Pittsburgh Musical Theater is um, obviously a nonprofit musical theater company. Um, we have a, a professional theater company and a wonderful conservatory. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I like about doing porn. It's a fantasy. Yeah. Um, guys see me on Pornhub or they see any of my content ever and they're like, wow, I like really want to like have a chance to sleep with her, mm-hmm. touch her, whatever, to, like be in her presence. There's one vein of people was like, yeah, let's get some work. Yeah. This is great. Black people in movies. And then there was a whole pushback by, you know, the NAACPs and the urban, urban leagues of the world are saying that this is just not how we want to portray ourselves right. as we try to sort of integrate and assimilate into main culture. If I don't stand up and speak for the people that I have been seeing being oppressed for so long, who is going to do it? Right. I had a real specific vision of how I wanted the show to look and I figured, um, it's a no-brainer that I should direct this one. Um, your artistic director, you know, I guess probably the simplest way to, pr- to explain it is that it's a, I'm a producer. I'm a theatrical producer. Yeah. Comedy is the only thing that made me happy. Yeah. Uh, I only worked a day job to support my comedy habit. Right. Like, that's right. the only thing. That's the only reason I did it. I don't know a lot of, of, of festivals in Pittsburgh alone that are, you know, pulling in the same, right. you know, um, kind of, uh, of attention, especially in the black community. I mean, it's a... It's a very unlikely city to have, you know, a, a black beer festival. Right. How are you going to win this district? And I said, well, you know, I'm going to knock doors. Right. Like, I realize there's a little bit of a Republican advantage in the past um, cycle. But, you know, I really think I can get out there and do the work. And when you look at the Democratic Party historically, whether it's nationally or in Pennsylvania or even more narrowly scoped in Allegheny County, Black people, people of color, do not have that seat at the table. If you can tell me a time in American history or world history where people didn't get high, then I could be against decriminalization and legalization. Right. But if you can't tell me a time in American history where people didn't get high, then it's kind of difficult for me to understand why we've incarcerated generations right. and generations over something that's been here since the beginning of time and has been used since the beginning of time. We were going to do uh, a very comic-centric show yeah. and put the comics back in Comic-Con. And that kind of became our slogan. I got to think it's kind of a bittersweet uh, moment for you. Yeah, I, every day, I'm just like, I can't believe this is even happening because when I look at the lineup, I'm just like yeah. floored that these people even all agreed to like play <laughs> the show that I was putting together. Yeah. The Phillies spent $330 million on Harper and $50 million on McCutcheon. Pirates spent eight million in the off season, <laughs> but it might have been the best eight million dollars ever spent in baseball. They- it takes place all over the city. We think of the city as our stage, right? So um, we've been in abandoned swimming pools. We've been in groves of trees. We are at the Cary Blast furnaces right now. <laughs> I had an opponent last time that now supported me, uh, which was Randy Zotter. So last right. time we split the vote. And so it was really nice to have that all come together at the end. Sure. Uh, combined with a lot more people who were on the ground, door knocking to make sure that, you know, we were really going to um, win. And we right. Were gonna, when we were going to win big. Right. It's not just about uh, abortion access. It's not just about the medical care that you get. Uh, it's about if and when you choose to start a family, that you can raise that child in a safe environment where that family can thrive. Pittsburgh is awesome because they buy art, you right. know, and that's why we're still right. here 60 years later is because people, um, they come down and they buy art. Right. So it's awesome. My mom was a high school math teacher for 30 years, and that is truly service because I think education is our real homeland defense. So they taught me by living it, integrity's values, service to country, to others above self, and accountability and answering for oneself. And that's the essence of why I'm running. Right. Well, here we are. 
with a president who's not willing to do that. And he's going to take advantage of the powers that he ha now has. Right. And so while the decisions that are made by Trump uh, are, uh, I think, many times unconstitutional, uh, we also have to look at members of Congress sure. and see what they have been doing, but they haven't been doing right to fight this fight and what they've done in the past to allow Trump right. to come in and do and take the actions he's, he's taking. That's going to be trouble. And I come up real sheepish and I'm all afraid. And yes, Mr. Delilah, because I can I want you to look outside. Look at the street corner over there. You see Sloopies? Yes. You see that guy in the corner with the t-shirt on and the cigarettes rolled up in his sleeve and a cool 45 in his hand? You see that guy? He's a loser. That's you in 10 years. 10 years. That's you, Chris. Cooking for me was was a personal thing. I, mm -hmm. I did it at home, but I took it very seriously. I guess you could say it was a, it was a really intense hobby for me. Right. Um, uh, I guess it was just something I never felt the need to really show off. I mean, I started acting when I was six. My yeah. first big gig was playing a young Tony Danza on Who's the Boss on the 100th episode. Well, what defines Pittsburgh to, to a lot of people? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it has often been referred to as a shot in a beer town. So I right. thought, oh, wouldn't it be great if I could just set it in a diner like Cheers, you know, mm -hmm. and, have, and have these regular people come in. But a lot of them would be the politicians, the city council people, you know, people that uh, were in the news. Right. And I was just like, I'm not having fun doing anything. This has to change. Like, why be an artist if you're not having fun in life? You know, I could just go work at Starbucks. And uh, and so I just made a pact where I'm like, I'm not going to write any more set lists. I'm just going to go and I'm going to feel the energy and we're going to see what happens. And I have had more fun doing stand up. I have done more variety of spaces and it's just working out. Pittsburgh needed an Irish festival. Uh, they grew up in an Irish family, learning about Irish culture, listening to the songs, eating the food, and they, they felt like Pittsburgh really needed an opportunity, in addition to St. Patrick's Day, to really celebrate this culture. We have, compared to other cities, we have a pretty small and pretty new uh, Latino population. Mm -hmm. um, but as they um, develop roots here and connections and uh, community, uh, we see second, third, fourth generations as well, but there's still new arrivals. So. Um, a rich mix. In my opinion, there's, there's no doubt that prescription drugs uh, were what started this epidemic. Uh, the heroin trade really followed where the, the drugs are being prescribed. Um, there was clearly misinformation given to doctors. If the New England Patriots win the tiebreaker because they beat the Steelers head to head, they get home field in the playoffs. That's huge. That's how they win. So you try to deny that when you can. I just love the NFL and how they have it set up. It's the most perfect league when it comes to equality in terms of money, uh, allocation, revenue sharing, and talent distribution. That's what that's what you want mm -hmm. as an ownership. A museum is a business, um, and a business needs to run well, and a director needs to oversee the business. So like any business, you spend a lot of your day in a in meetings uh, and lots of unexpected things come up. So I am running because it is time that District 36 was represented by someone who upholds progressive democratic values. Right. He goes, I don't want another pack of peanuts. Yeah. So he's ripping up another, the first pack of peanuts. He lays them out on a napkin and starts counting them. As I'm making this drink, I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> right. So he's counting the peanuts, counting the peanuts. And I set his drink down. I'm like, it's $5 for the drink. He goes, $5 for the drink, 500 for the flight, 10 fucking peanuts. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this? I picked up a peanut. I ate it. I said, I'm sorry. You're only supposed to get nine. <laughs> and that might have been the moment right then and yeah. there. But I saw that a lot of people did support the idea of change in the district attorney's office. And I've watched um, 20 years of failed policies and thought I cannot watch another four years. So that's why I jumped in the race. And just like in any other city across the country, it's the neighborhood parks that really are the heart and soul of the park system. The majority of parks are neighborhood parks. They're the ones people go to to take their kids right. to go to the playground, meet friends, take their dogs for a walk. Inside of a democratic primary, the black community in the county has an outsized influence. Right. Uh, we're highly registered as Democrats and we show up to vote in democratic primaries mm -hmm. and have been conditioned to. People who love history, for example, we added all these covered bridges and someone said, oh, do you really want to add all these covered bridges? And I said, well, yeah, because somebody who's a covered bridge enthusiast right. is going to want to drive around and see all of these covered bridges. Exactly. So, yeah, so it's pretty comprehensive and that's our goal is we want to be the most 
comprehensive uh, listing that's out there. Uh, we created this company that does these traveling beer pong tournaments. Uh, beer pong became cornhole, became air guitar and everything. And next thing you know, uh, almost 10 years later, uh, I, I wrote the book in 2010 and here we are in 2019, almost 10 years later, uh, we got this TV show coming out. How long do, uh, should I defrost my turkey? Uh -huh. And I think the the large misconception is is that you need a full day for every five pounds. They're like, do not buy your turkey on Wednesday morning thinking it's going to be fully defrosted by Thursday. You're not roasting that bird. A lot of the people don't realize that a lot of wineries and vineyards, I should say, uh -huh. uh, sell off a lot of a lot of their grapes on the open market because that's a way for them to generate revenue quickly, uh -huh. as opposed to making the wine uh -huh. and then waiting two years to to get that money back. And now we're fighting a battle on two fronts, both in negotiations and in the newsroom. Uh, in the last year, particularly in the last couple months, uh, conditions in the newsroom have been intolerable. Looking back and watching all the episodes and even um, looking back and talking to my wife, my favorite one was the, the, the one I got eliminated on, actually. Really? It, I think it's the one where I had the most fun and I kind of let loose because that's the one where I did the stacker on. <laughs> and people are like, what's a stacker on? And they're like, wait, man, that actually sounds kind of cool, you know? Just, I just want to be clear, I don't fuck my fans either. So. <laughs> I'm on oh. the fence. Call me. No, I'm just kidding. Um, another, another